All right, here we go, guys, and we're back at the 2024 Florida Boat Shows. This, this is going to be split between Miami and Stewart. If it's outdoors, this was at Stewart. If it's indoors, it was Miami. And we're talking big center consoles on this one, uh, specifically from 33 feet, that's the Dusky, all the way up to 40 feet, that's the Twin V. We also have offerings from Cobia, Edgewater, and Nortec in between those two sizes, and yeah, the prices are astronomical, uh, about three and a quarter, uh, 325000 for the cheapest and smallest Dusky, and uh, just under a million for that big twin V. As always, these will be quick hits, spend a few minutes on each boat, we'll lay out the specs, the boat show special price. Let me know in the comments which you would pick and why. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing. See the dual props here? These are Suzuki DF350s on a big factory direct Dusky 33XF. Boat show price for this 33 is uh, just under 325. If you got it with triple 200s, I would rather do the twin 350s personally, 700 horsepower as opposed to triple 200s. Uh, it's a little more with the triples. Uh, not sure why anyone would add an engine and uh, get less horsepower, but in the comments, if somebody knows, you can let me know. You can see this is a stepped hull and it's a beefy hull. I mean, these guys have been building boats for a very long time. You order from them factory direct. You design the boat any way you want. And we'll see here. This is a big, big 33. I personally would get rid of that, uh, that rear bench seat here. There's access to your bilge. There's a big fish box. Big live well here in the center. I mean, if you were cruising a lot, keep it. But if you're using this for fishing, you already have the mezzanine seat here, uh, the driver's seat there. You got one, two, three, four, five rod holders on top. Uh, factory direct, so you can add as many rod holders on the side as you like. There's a little tackle storage area here. It's a couple of drawers. Flip up bolster seats here. Room for two big screens here. That, this one has a big Simrad. Three-sided uh, glass windshield, glove box up here, VHF radio here, twin uh, digital controls here, joystick steering too. There's the Suzuki gauges, the big sim rod we talked about, a couple of cup holders here. I presume that's your batteries in there. There's another footrest here. Yeah. Now, me personally, I would get rid of that table, but again, if if you want to picnic on the boat, absolutely keep it. You can access all your bench seats here without having to remove the cushions via uh, the latches, which are exposed. That's a nice touch. It is a three-piece hull. It is really high up on the gunnels. You can see it's coming up to my belly. Big cooler up here. It's on a gas assist strut. Let's take a look at the head compartment. There we go. So not gel coat finish, but that's okay. Uh, electronics are exposed as well, but that's okay. I don't know about the sink there with the electricals there, but uh, you know, I don't think you're going to be splashing water up there. Porcelain head, storage underneath. I presume you could probably throw a mattress under there and sleep, but that you know, the head would need to be positioned a little bit better for that. Yeah. There you go, the 33 from Dusky, 700 horsepower, 330-ish thousand. Um, just a really big, massive boat. The GoPro never does it justice, but this, again, is coming up over my stomach, this, the side gunnels here, and it's an open canvas, you can add rod holders to your heart's content you could lose this table which i would get in personal preference and have a big fishing platform like i said earlier i would lose that rear bench seat too but that's just me so you got this on this side as well more tackle storage all right let's see what we got next all right we're looking at one of the big boys in the cobia fleet uh, 
believe this is their biggest model, the 350. This is a 24 twin, 450 V8s, 5.6 liters. These are the XTOs, 449.9. So let's say, let's just say 450. Um, I've seen these boats when they first came out, they were primarily rigged with triple 300s. They were close to 70 mile an hour boats. Oh, and that was with 900 horsepower. This is also 900 horsepower. Uh, could be close to that. Uh, got your boarding ladder here, nice cover on top, stows it out of the way. You don't and see it has a latch too, so it doesn't flip up. Um, and so when you're walking in, you don't stub your toes or twist your ankle with that boarding ladder. Two big live wells here in the aft section, a couple of rod holders in between. You got, let's see what's in here because Cobia has, yeah, so this is just more access to the bilge. Uh, Cobia has something very interesting here. This is your main access to the bilge. This is electronically controlled. You flip a switch and this literally lifts up and you get down there and do whatever you want. Uh, more cup holders, rod holders along the side. You see a side entry door on this side, a bait tackle area, bait prep area here. There's a little sink. This could be a live well or, nope, some kind of, uh, you can put drinks, cooler, frozen bait in here. Uh, you can rig your, rig your rods up here. See the storage trays in here. Slide out drawers here, same on the bottom. Well thought out. One, two on each side, Christmas tree style. And on top we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have 10 here in the T-top, in the back of the T-top. Twin Garmin's, these I would guess are 16s. Yamaha Diagnostics, digital steering, joystick controls. Two cup holders on either side. Three across seating. Batteries are in here. And it's very windy, guys. I sincerely apologize if there's a lot of wind noise. I do have a wind sock on, but uh, when it's blowing 25-ish, it doesn't do a lot of help. This table actually is also electrically I keep saying electronically, I mean electrically controlled. There's a switch somewhere, I don't see it right now, that moves this up and down so you can have better access to the anchor locker if you want, or you can make this a sun pad, you can make it a table if you want to eat, and people sit three-sided around it. Big lounge seat up here. See, there's a handle here to open it too, and I'm gonna break it if I do because not quite sure how it opens, so we're not gonna we're not gonna play too much with that. We don't want to break it, but uh, yeah, there's a sink, there's a head, and there's a big sleeping berth down here. Really nice down here. Gel coat finish. See uh, a rack there if you want to throw a towel. There's dry storage here. You can also use it as a fish box. Those are fish boxes, but again, uh, they're gasketed. You can use them as dry storage. That's kind of after the boat. Water tends to seep back there more than it would in the middle. I would just use it as a fish box. Um, yeah, and just a, a big beamy 35. All right, let's hit the next boat. Edgewater 370cc, boat show price 789648. It's a 37 foot, almost 16,000 pound boat. And at almost 800 grand, let's see what we get. Well, you get that side entry door, nice and easy to step into. Get a massive live well here. Would like to see aquarium style at this price point. Got a little sink and bait prep area here really big kill box and you see it extends under that sink there's the sink you can put a lot of a lot of fish in there um, all your plugs here for your shore power and whatever else you need you got this big access to your bilge area here got a seat here a seat here and uh what is this a little bait prep area oh this is heavy yeah a little bait prep area in here what about on this side? You got a little sink here. More bait prep here, I assume, yeah. This actually comes down. You can see there's a couple cup holders up there. This also, like I said, lifts out. And you get another seat here. You could 
easily fit three across there, three across here, but it saves on the fishing room. Cup holders, rod holders, up and down the gunnel. What do we got rod holder wise? We got a pretty high up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm six feet tall. I'm on my tippy toes, I'll be able to reach them, but oh. But this is what you're paying. Well, let's look at this first. Three across seating, flip up bolster seats, joy joystick controls. What do you got? Triple Yamaha F425s. Um, got the digital controls. You got a couple big Garmin screens here. The push button switches. Um, glove box here. But this is what you're buying this boat for. This is. A floating condo fishing boat. Oh, it's so nice and quiet in here. Look at all this room. You can sleep two people here, no problem at all. You got a nice sink here. You got a fridge here. Look at that. Microwave here. Storage there. TV over there. Enclosed head here with a shower. Yeah, little port window there too. Access to your electronics behind those. Everything is gel coat finished in here. Premium materials. This is just a nice area to be in. Uh, it's so loud. We have the cell phone going off. It's Sweeney calling me. Uh, we'll call him back. He's at the show. But yeah, you're, you're paying for that cabin. Let's just take a quick look at the front of the boat. Big lounge seat table that I believe is electrically actuated. I think those are the switches to move it up and down. Yeah, table up, table down. Combo cup holder, rod holder here. More combo cup holder, rod holders along the side. This would come all the way flat and you would have a lot of room for fishing. I'm guessing, no, this probably doesn't open because you got the cabin under there. I mean, Really nice boat, and there's a little pop-up area if you are in the cabin and you want some natural air to come in. I mean, it's a lot of money, but boy, oh boy, how comfortable would it be, you know, riding out 40 miles in this, especially, or more, right? Especially if you're a passenger, you could take a nap in the cabin, or you could just sit back in any of these seats and just let this big 16,000-pound boat absorb all the waves and get you out there comfortably. Oh, to have this kind of money to get something like this, how sweet would that be? All right, let's see what we have next. So quad, uh, Mercury Racing 400s on this 392 Nortec Superfish. This is what my buddy Mike has, the Super Crab. He also has quad 400s. It's a great boat. Um, let's take a look back here. This is really a go-fast boat that's also rigged for fishing. You'll see a small live well here in the corner. Rod holders throughout. Actually, a lot of rod holders, just six across right here in this little area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I love that. Eleven rod holders on top, two more on the sides, a slide-out cooler, tackle storage, a bait prep area, cup holders up there. Yeah, this is insane. You got a... a side opening door as well another live well small live well on that side same suite of rod holders all up and down what's the msrp on this or the boat show special on this eight and a quarter okay yeah my my buddy he's on his second he loves this boat loves it um so eight and a quarter uh which you're really paying for the four engines and the fit and finish of these nortex they're known for that I love this seating position when you're driving. Uh, I have clear visibility ahead. You don't feel like you're looking over anything. Got a big electronics box here. Uh, Merck vessel display there. Garmin radio here. These giant uh, Garmin screens here. So like there's a bow thruster on this one too. Flip up bolster seats that can probably squeeze two people on, on either side of them if you needed to. Cup holders as well. Um, big open layout for fishing, but you have these seats up here that fold out of the way. Again, hardcore fishing machine. Look at all this in-deck storage. You'll never run out of places to store things or ice your catch. 
uh, big lounge seat up here as well. Combo cup rod holders all up here. Again, they, they, this is like a hardcore fishing and cruising boat. So hardcore cruising, hardcore fishing. This is up to my thighs, believe it or not, and I'm all the way at the bow of the boat, huge anchor locker. Um, it it kind of has that beak in the front, which is why the, 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 the front entry is a little lower. Um, let's take a quick look at the head if we can. Do we have to go around the other way? Somebody's not the thinnest person. Nope. Yeah, again, sleeping area, porcelain head there, sea deck material on the floor, access your electronics back here. Um, and I know this, this, boat will, this boat should touch 80 miles an hour. I think Mike's is close to that. She uh, 80 mile an hour boat? A little better than that. A little better than that. Yeah. Beautiful boat. All right. And here's the uh, information if anybody wants to order one. Video on my channel of fishing on uh, a good a good friend of mine, Brendan. His friend, now a friend of mine, Omar. He's got a 33 Invincible catamaran, the 33. Uh, this is significantly larger, as you can see. You see twin 400B, a quad, quadruple. What am I talking about, twin? Twin on each side, quadruple 400 Merc V10s. Let's step on board. I don't know what size this is yet, but uh, you'll see some uh, live well slash cooler on this side. Same on this side. Live well on that side, on the starboard side. Big live well here, too, on the port side. Look at all the storage underneath. I know he had a lot of storage. Look at this tackle center. This is unreal. This is a twin V. Ah, twin V, twin V. So this might be the 360. I thought it was invincible because they have an invincible sticker or flag flying here. I'm like, this is insane. What is this? This is a 400. So this is a 40 foot twin V. Jesus, 1600 horsepower, almost a million bucks, 997, 237. Um, look at all that storage there. Big screens, big Garmin screens, uh, dual row of three across seating, all of them with flip up bolster seats. Um, okay, that, that explains why I need 16 horsepower. Look at, the, look at the square footage here. This is unreal. I mean, this is bigger than some studios in Tokyo. It's really, really big. Uh, and one, two, three, four, five, five across on top, two. So you have 10 rod holders here. You have four on this side on that side so just between these two areas you have 18 rod holders see the side entry door here too but you have rod and cup holders all up and down the boat you have a ton of storage in the floor up and down the boat catamaran is always not going to have the biggest head but this one's not bad i mean it's certainly kind of uh wide if you will it's not going to be that high but it's wide and there is a porcelain head um and it does close which sometimes with twin bees, not always a given that you don't have to jiggle it a little. Uh, more storage here. You can see I would, I would use one of these. They got them on both sides as trash. And yeah, flat floor, no step up, like in the Freemans to the front. More storage there. You got more storage here. Look at this, a cooler here. Nice lounge seat up here too. The gunnels are really high. Wow. Now, the question is, would you pay almost a million dollars for a Twin V? Um, I don't know, but it's a beautiful boat with a lot of square footage. It really is. I mean, when I first stepped on, I was convinced it was an Invincible. And you see there's an Invincible right next to me too, and maybe that's what threw me off. Uh, maybe I saw that and thought this was an Invincible that I'm on right now, but no, it's, a, it's as the name denotes, it's a Twin V. Um, check out one more thing before we go. What is this? A little storage area here if you're fishing here and you want to charge your phone or anything like that. Okay. So I've never seen that before. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's see what we got next.